today, we are going to talk about sex. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why do I have to learn about this now? I'm only in middle school. Here are two important reasons. When you are a teenager, your doctor will start asking if you are sexually active. And it is important to know what this means. Knowing the basic knowledge about sex, STIs, and contraceptions will help you feel more comfortable asking questions and reaching out if you have any concerns. Also, it's important to learn the ways to keep yourself safe and healthy if and when you do become sexually active. So, what does it mean to be sexually active? Some people think it only involves contact between the genitals, which is the penis for males and the vagina for females, and this is called vaginal sex. But being sexually active can also mean other things. It can involve contact between the mouth and genitals, commonly called oral sex, and can involve contact between the penis and anus, commonly called anal sex. If you do any of these, it counts as being sexually active. But only vaginal sex between a penis and vagina can lead to pregnancy and a baby. But any type of sex can spread sexually transmitted infections. Hmm. But what exactly are sexually transmitted infections? Sexually transmitted infections, also known as STIs, are diseases and sicknesses that you can get from any type of sexual activity. There are many different diseases you can get. Some you may have heard of include gonorrhea, herpes, chlamydia, syphilis, HIV AIDS, HPV, and some of them can be really bad, and even lead to death if not treated. If you are sexually active, some signs that you might have an STI include, for females, a change in vaginal discharge. Normally, vaginal discharge is clear or slightly cloudy. But if it changes color, smells bad, or burns, it can be a sign that you have an STI. You can also get painful bumps, open sores, or warts on your genitals or anus. Sometimes you can have fever, pain, Ouch. and vaginal bleeding even when it's not your period. For males, you can have itchy, burning discharge from your penis. Yikes! You can also get painful bumps, open sores, or warts on your genitals or anus. Yeah, I know. STIs sound scary. <laughs> but for the most part, you can only get them if you are sexually active. So. If you aren't sexually active, you shouldn't worry. Sometimes though, you might have symptoms like a change in discharge, soreness, and pimples around your genitals. That doesn't mean you have an STI, but can be uncomfortable and scary anyways. If you have any questions ever, you can go to your doctor or health clinic. If you are sexually active, and think you might have an STI. Some STIs go away with medicine, but some you have for the rest of your life. Even if you don't have any symptoms, it is still possible to have an STI, which is scary because you can pass it on without knowing it. Oh no. So, it's always important to be safe and careful, and if you have any concerns, see a doctor. 
And don't be afraid or ashamed or embarrassed. Doctors, nurses, health clinics are there to treat you. And the quicker you get treatment, the better. One specific STI I am going to talk about is HIV. HIV stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus. Let's break that down. Human means you. Immuno means immune system. It's what fights infections and keeps you from getting sick. Deficiency means you don't have much of it and it doesn't work well. So, HIV is a virus that you get that makes your immune system not work. So you can't fight off the germs you normally can and you can get really sick and even die. This disease is sneaky and sometimes you won't even notice you have it until it gets bad. So, it is very important if you are sexually active to get screened for it at your doctor's office or health clinic. Okay, that was scary, I know. But there are ways to prevent them even if you are sexually active. So how can you protect yourself from STIs? For the most part, you can only get STIs from having sex. So, one way to protect yourself is to not have sex. Another thing you can do is get the HPV shot, which is a vaccine that can protect you from certain types of HPV that cause cancer. If you go to a doctor for checkups, you have probably heard of this vaccine and some of you might have already gotten it. If you are sexually active, there are a few other things you can do. You can go to a doctor or health clinic to test if you or your partner have any STIs so that you don't pass them on without knowing. Also, using condoms can prevent STIs from spreading from person to person. Now, let's talk about babies. Well, we already learned that you can only get pregnant and have a baby if you have vaginal sex. Let's talk about ways to prevent getting pregnant so that you don't get pregnant by accident and when you don't want to. Contraception means something that stops you from getting pregnant by stopping the egg and sperm from meeting up. This is not the same thing as abortion, which is when you end the pregnancy once the egg and sperm have already met up and started to grow and develop. There are many different types of contraception. Some work really well, some work just okay, and some work so badly that you shouldn't use them at all. Some types you can buy at the store, some you have to go to a doctor for, and some types are based on your behavior. Let's look back on what we learned from the first video. The way a female gets pregnant is the sperm from the penis enter the uterus through the vagina, and the sperm swim and meet up with an egg. So, to prevent getting pregnant, we can stop this in many ways. The first way we can prevent this is to not have sex, so none of this happens. This is called abstinence. Let's say that again. Abstinence means not having sex. Abstinence is a 100% guarantee that you will not get pregnant or STIs. But 
If you are sexually active, there are other ways to prevent pregnancy. There are ways to block sperm from getting into the uterus. An example are condoms. They are easy to use, you can buy them anywhere, and they are the only type that can protect against pregnancy and STIs. Woo! Yeah! Another way you can prevent pregnancy is you can stop the ovary from making an egg. Examples include the patch, pill, vaginal ring, and shot. You need to go to a doctor or health clinic to get these, and they all work the same way. They have hormones in them that stop an egg from being made. If there is no egg, the sperm have nothing to meet up with, and so there is no pregnancy. However, if you use any of these methods, you can still get and spread STIs. Another type is long-acting contraceptives, such as the IUD or implant. These ones you have to go to a doctor or health clinic for, and they are inserted into your body, either in your uterus or your arm. These work for many years and are really good at preventing pregnancy, but they won't stop you from getting STIs. One more type of contraception is spermicide, and you can buy this at the store. Spermicides kill sperm, but they actually don't work so well on their own, and there is a high chance you can get pregnant. If you do use spermicides, it's best to use them with another type of contraception, like condoms, for extra protection. Lastly, there are ways you can change your behavior to try to prevent pregnancy, such as the calendar method, withdrawal, and douching. I'm not going to go into details about each one in this video, but for all of these, you have a high chance of getting pregnant. Now, let's understand just how well or just how badly each of these ways work. For each type of birth control, I am going to show you a grid of 100 symbols, and each symbol stands for one woman who uses this type of birth control. The blue X represents a woman who uses this type of birth control and doesn't get pregnant. A red baby represents a woman who uses this type of birth control and gets pregnant. Let's start with a really popular type of birth control, condoms. So for 100 women that use only condoms for birth control, this is how many of them will get pregnant. So 18 will become pregnant and 82 will not. How about people that use the patch, pill, or ring? For these women, nine of them will become pregnant and 91 will not. Now, let's explore the ones that don't work so well. Women that use behavioral methods, such as withdrawal, 25 will get pregnant and 75 will not. So, if you use this type of birth control, you basically have a 1 in 4 chance of getting pregnant. For spermicide, it is even higher and 29 out of 100 women will get pregnant. Now, let's go to a type that works really well, IUDs and implants. For females that use IUDs and implants as birth control, only one out of 100 will get pregnant and 99 will not. Hey, wait a second. One out of a hundred chance of getting pregnant is pretty good. But what happens if I want an absolutely zero chance of getting pregnant? And I mean zero, like no chance at all. And the only way to 100% guarantee you won't get pregnant or STIs is by practicing... Abstinence. 
So what happens if I'm sexually active and don't use any birth control? What are my chances of getting pregnant? For women that have unprotected vaginal sex without any birth control, 85 out of 100 will get pregnant. <coughs> So, when do people start having sex? Honestly, there is no right answer. Sexual activity is a personal choice and involves many factors, including your feelings and values, cultural and religious beliefs, family rules, comfort with your body, and thinking about risks of infection and pregnancy. If you find yourself feeling confused about decisions related to sex, you may be able to talk to an adult, like a parent, doctor, older sibling, or relative, for advice. But keep in mind that everyone's opinion about sex is different. Even though another person may have useful advice to share, in the end, the decision is up to you. The most important thing to remember is that you are in charge of your own body and it is not okay to have sex when you don't want to. It is never okay. If someone tries to pay you, to force you to have sex with them, says they'll break up with you if you don't have sex, or threatens to hurt you or tell people your secrets if you don't, this is not okay. And it's actually illegal. When this happens, some people feel like they have to keep it a secret because they are scared or ashamed. But doctors, teachers, and police are some people that you can go to that can help. Being able to stand up for yourself might be a very hard decision, but know that you don't have to do it alone. Here are some important phone numbers of people you can call if you need help. Well, I hope you learned a lot from this video. But if you need any more information, you can always talk with your doctor. There is also a lot of good information online. Bedsider.org is really good if you want to learn more about birth control. Otherwise, my favorite is kidshealth.org.